Well, hello there, everyone. This is UXW Bill with you today. I figured, why don't I try to sneak in one more video before the end of the year 2021? Talk about something that really can't come soon enough. I haven't exactly been setting the world on fire making videos this year. What am I up to? Three, maybe four by now? You'd think I would look and do some research before I started the video, but no, that, that just seemed too much like work. Now this particular video will be one of the most desirable UXW Bill videos because it's going to feature a computer. Here we have an Acer C720P touch-capable Chromebook that has been left behind by the ceaseless march of technology. As we all know, technology is just like rust. It never ever happens to sleep. Now, a person can still flip this open, fire it up, and use it. Oh, look. <laughs> Hazards of a reflective screen right there, folks. Comes right up. You could sign into it. Go ahead and use it. But you're stuck at Chrome version 76, which is going to become increasingly less useful in the world today. And for those of you who are wondering why it always sounds like I'm sitting toward one side of the camcorder or another, well, now you know, because you can see it in the reflection. So what can we do to get this thing doing something a little more interesting, a little more pertinent with a little more modern software? Well, the good news is that the very most of these that base around an Intel, or in some cases even an AMD microprocessor, can actually be modified to run a conventional operating system. You could run another version of Linux on it, which is what Chrome OS is internally. Some brave souls have even gone so far as to stick Windows 10 on these things, and I guess that just proves that there's all kinds of people out there in the world. Now, of course, Chrome OS really doesn't interest me that much. Neither do Chromebooks, to be completely honest with you. But I do have an awful lot of time for small, low-power computers such as this. This is based around an Intel Celeron processor of some description, has four gigabytes of soldered memory, and there's also, believe it or not, the solid state drive in these is user changeable if you can find one that has a compatible form factor and will actually fit in the machine. Now this particular example has not been opened since it was manufactured in what? 2015, March 10th, I think it says? Wow, a little, a little over six years, getting closer to seven every day. I'd say that's done well for a cheap laptop. I almost feel bad about opening this thing up, but that's what we're going to do in the name of science and getting this thing ready to do something interesting. Now, this is not really meant as a how-to video. I'm not going to go into great detail with all the steps here. In fact, we're not even going to go all that terribly far with this because I don't want to make this a terribly long video. I'd like to get it edited and hopefully uploaded today, and that involves quite a bit of work, plus waiting for the thing to render and ultimately to upload. And while I don't want to seem like I'm petting the sweaty things when I say it, I guess I'll just go ahead and come right out and say it in the video. This is my gift to the world, folks. I don't owe you these videos. I don't do these videos because I owe you anything. And if you act like that in the comments, as unfortunately some people have, well, keep it up in one of these days. You're probably going to have a, a very bad feeling when UXW Bill finally says he's had enough. But that, that is not imminent. That is not even remotely around the corner. I love what I do here. But making YouTube videos is first and foremost something I do for fun. And when people start demanding that I make them, well, suddenly it's not nearly as much fun anymore. Now, of course, depending on what you have, and heaven knows there are quite a few different Chromebooks that are out there in the world today, they all come apart a little bit differently. If you're not sure, you can probably find a guide online. Google actually has a surprising amount of information about the internal workings of these things online. And while I've not personally done so, I believe it would be possible to even build things from the source code they provide such as the programs that run the embedded controller, the Chrome operating system itself. I think you could build most, if not all, of that yourself from source. And then there are, of course, people like Neverware, who were recently borged by Google, that build a version of Chrome OS that runs on a lot of standard desktop computers. 
But now I'm getting way off the subject here. To start out with this modification, we need to get this thing open. Actually, we should probably back up a step before that. For those of you who may not be so familiar with computers, maybe thinking about doing something like this, but aren't sure if you're confident enough to approach it and don't want anything to go wrong, make sure you take a backup of your data before you do this, because you will end up wiping everything that is on the machine as part of the conversion process. Now the first thing that we have to do, we have to open up the machine. Actually, we have to get the right, uh, right screwdriver bit here. Let's see if we can find that. Maybe I should just get another screwdriver here. We'll see if this one will do it, or if it just wants to cam out. Nope, that's going to work just fine. So we'll go ahead and undo these. I guess I'll shut the camera off. You don't need to watch this in its entirety, now do you? All right, so here we are. We've established a foothold from which to launch the invasion. And what we have to do in here, we have to locate something that's common to most all of the Chromebooks, regardless of who made, sold, or supported them, and that is the right protect screw. Now, some devices have a jumper, but most of them have a screw, and you simply have to locate it. Again, you can probably find this information at the other end of a web search. In the case of this Acer model, the right protection screw is right there. Now, if you really want to be cautious, you can go ahead and disconnect the battery and whatnot. I'm not feeling nearly that cautious. I've got a little, a little electrolytic capacitor here that's on a stalk, kind of glued down to the motherboard, plugs into it. I probably don't want to get too rambunctious with that. But right there is the right protection screw. And all in the world we have to do, look at how brave I am, I didn't even pull the battery for doing that. All you have to do is disconnect it. Now it should be said that if you want to run an on another operating system on these, if you want to try that and see how it goes, you don't have to crack the cover if you only intend to do so on a temporary basis you can actually put your Chromebook in developer mode. This is, of course, again, assuming that it's x86 based. I don't believe there's anything analogous for most, if not all, of the ARM-based models. This same basic procedure also applies to things like Chrome boxes, maybe even Chrome bits and stuff like that. I have a Chrome box somewhere that I am actually going to repurpose in this fashion. Maybe I'll make a video about that at some point in the future. We'll see. We'll see what I feel as though I have time to do. I did have one of the screws on this thing. I almost wanted to round off or cam out on me. That would not have been good. But anyway, if you just want to try another operating system, there is a hidden PC compatible BIOS in most of these machines. And all you have to do is enable what they call the developer mode, which you can do completely under software control. You will, of course, lose information that's stored on your Chromebook, so again, you'll want to make sure that you have a backup in place. Okay, I don't know why that screw's not going in. That's just lovely. But it figures if it was going to happen, it would happen on camera, wouldn't it? <laughs> I'm going to check that here in a little bit and see if I can... Get it to start, odds are it's just being bulky. Just doesn't want to play along for some reason. But yeah, if you if you set up your Chromebook to boot in developer mode, again, instructions are available online at the other end of a web search using just about any popular search engine you might have an interest in. And that one's not wanting to go in either. Um, again, leave it to this thing to play up on camera, I guess. <laughs> But you can do that, and you can temporarily boot into another operating system. I'm going for the whole enchilada here. I am going to abandon Chrome OS and the Google firmware entirely using the work of a gentleman. I presume it's a gentleman. Jeez, I can't even talk. I presume it's a gentleman <laughs> by the name of Mr. Chromebox. He also welcomes donations, and being as I have used his work in the past, I do believe that I will certainly make one, and I would encourage you to do the same so that he'll stay interested in doing that kind of work. But now that we've disabled the firmware write protection, I'm going to boot this thing up, I'm going to make sure I didn't leave any files on it that I care about, I'll place it in developer mode, and then I'm going to download and utilize Mr. Chromebox's scripts 
to replace the firmware on this from Google with a standard core boot based firmware. And it should be noted that on some of these models there's actually a switch that you have to be sure is depressed in order to make sure that the unit will actually go ahead and power up. I know that's true of the Acer 720. They abandon it in both the firmware and the hardware, although the artifacts are still there on the board in the next model up, the 740. But now that we've got that done, we'll just go ahead and boot it up and pretty soon you'll see that I've completely screwed it up and it doesn't work anymore. And that'll be the end of the video. But nope, there we are. Still runs just fine. By the way, you are watching this on the UXW Bill channel, or at least you should be. If you're not, please head over there and support my work, support the work from the person who actually created it. I'll go ahead and log in here, and I'll just make sure that I've got all my files and everything I care about off the machine. Just plug in a standard USB flash drive of some description and copy them right off. I know you're probably supposed to use, you're probably supposed to store your files in the clown or something, but I don't care to do that. And while these things do not have much local storage, they do at least have a little bit. All right, I've gone ahead and made my backup. So now, just to go ahead and be nice to this thing, I reckon we'll go ahead and sign out. And it should come back up to the login screen here momentarily. And that's when we're going to issue a special keystroke. This is how you can repair damaged software or profiles on one of these by resetting it to the factory. If you press escape, refresh, and power on the average Chromebook, you'll get this screen that says it's missing or damaged, and you can actually do what's referred to as an in-place power wash here. That clears the storage memory and basically lets you start fresh. In order to do this, you have to go like you're going to switch into developer mode by pressing Control D. There's no prompt. You have to know to do it. And then it says, OK, if you're going to turn operating system verification off, you can press Enter. Then it comes up with what they call the scary screen. And it'll beep at you, too. It takes a couple seconds. I really thought I would have had it timed better than that. Ah, there it is. And eventually it will continue and boot up. The machine will prep itself for developer mode. This is thoroughly unexciting. It takes about 10 minutes for it to do so. I believe that is simply a security measure. So here I am, back again. The Chromebook has transitioned into developer mode, and it'll have you run through the same setup screen that it would if it was operating normally. It's at this juncture that you might want to make sure that you have another computer of some kind to hand. It can even be another Chromebook. This is another one that we'll repurpose at some other point in the future. I don't know if there'll be a video about that. But I'll go through and I'll run through and put in all the information that it wants. My Google account, SSID and credentials for the wireless network. And then we'll need to visit the website mrchromebox.tech. I will link that down in the video description, which I would implore you to read. I'll even try to keep it kind of short, although I'll probably fail. But at least the show's willing, right? <laughs> and we'll go through and we'll run his firmware utility script to begin the process of transitioning this thing into a standalone computer. It looks as though there's actually a little bit of a firmware update, and ordinarily I wouldn't bother with this, being as we're soon to replace the firmware with some of our own choosing, but I believe this actually corrects issues with this machine's trusted platform module. So we'll just go ahead and grab it. It's only the work of a few more minutes. So here we are at Mr. Chromebox's website, looking at the instructions to run the firmware utility script, which is what we want to do. And in a display of truly boundless optimism, I'm going to trust this thing to work properly right here on camera the first time I try it. I know, you should never trust a computer not to do that, especially when the pressure is on and the camera's rolling, because it'll give you exactly what it is that you're asking for. But never ever lose that optimism, kids. Don't die inside. <laughs> I know better, but I still have it. He recommends copying and pasting these, so that's exactly what we're going to do. We'll break into a shell over here. We've got to start by going into the Chrome OS diagnostic shell. You do that by pressing Control-Alt-T. 
then you issue the shell command, which only works when you're in developer mode. So if you get an error, you're probably not there. Then we'll go ahead and we'll just paste the command into the terminal. Go ahead and download a script. Then we will go ahead... This is one of the things that drives me nuts about earlier versions of Chrome OS. You can't do tap and a half to establish a drag lock on the trackpad. You've actually got to hold the thing down, which I find needlessly irritating. I think that's been rectified in newer releases, which of course this thing will never see. All right, so I've gone ahead and I've set up the script to run there, given it the permissions that it needs. Then we're going to go ahead and we're going to run it. And this is pretty self-explanatory. It guides you through the process, really does a pretty good job. It tells you what your various options are. It also reports on the status of things that you'll need to know, such as the firmware write protection screw being in place. You can see right there, it says firmware WP disabled. That's that screw that I took out earlier, and amazingly, it hasn't fallen on the floor yet. Yeah, there it is, right there. So what we want to do, we actually want to go ahead and install or update the UA, UEFI full ROM firmware. We're going to walk away from Chrome OS entirely. The RW Legacy firmware is an option for those of you who think you might still want to boot into Chrome OS at least periodically and who haven't set your firmware write protection to disabled. So we'll go ahead and we'll take option two. It warns you about doing this. You do have the potential of bricking your system. I've done several of these and I have never had the first problem. Rumor has it, it is pretty hard to brick these things. You can create a backup of your stock firmware. It's going to go ahead and download the full ROM firmware now. Then it will go ahead and flash it. It says it could take up to 90 seconds or a minute and a half. While it's doing that, I went ahead and I had a little flash drive around up here. Unfortunately, almost all of these did not contain an operating system, but I wound up with two that do. I won't guarantee that I've got these right, but one of these has Zorin OS on it, and the other one has Debian 11. I guess we'll try Zorin first, or if I grab Debian, we'll try that first. I know Debian will boot. I'm pretty sure that Zorin OS will certainly boot on this, because this is actually one of the better supported Chrome OS devices that you could do this to. And these things are cheap and getting cheaper every day in places like eBay. So we've done it. We've gone ahead and done it. We're committed now. In the case of this machine, you could flash back to the stock firmware. We'll go ahead and we'll power off. Don't be surprised if it gets stuck on this white screen when it shuts down, because in a way you've kind of pulled the rug out from under the Chrome OS system. So you may have to force it to power off by holding down the power button for about five seconds or so. Maybe a little longer than that. Okay, we'll go ahead and we'll stick in a USB device. I think the purple one has Zorin on it, OS on it. So we'll turn the power on, and then I've got to remember, do you have to press a key to get this thing to boot a particular selection? Press escape. Okay. Boot menu. Let's look in there. Okay. Okay, it is Debian 11 that's on the purple one. Well, we'll go ahead and we'll run the graphical installation. See if it crashes in some no doubt spectacular manner. Okay, so it's going to have you run through the uh, default installation. Our trackpad is not working, which is not usually a problem. So we'll just go ahead and force it to shut off. And then we'll try the other one. Hopefully this is the 64-bit version of the software. Okay. 
because you cannot boot 32-bit on these. It's simply not enabled. And really, I don't know that you'd want to be doing that for most purposes in the first place. But it does appear that it'll start up and work. The operating system that you could run, although I think it's slumbering and isn't in especially active development right now, is known as Gallium OS. Gallium OS is a Linux distribution that caters to people who are doing this sort of conversion with their Chromebooks. I don't think it's had an update since late 2019 or thereabouts. Oh, there's our trackpad, it's working now. We're coming up to a desktop. But it enables things, it sets up the keys up here so they function with the, I guess we'll move the camera down so you can actually see them, it sets these keys up so that they perform the functions that are indicated on them. Most Linux distributions are going to treat these as standard function keys. You could certainly do that with another Linux distribution of your own choosing. I've not looked into what's involved in that. We'll go ahead and quit the Zorin OS installation here. And I think... I think it'll take us to a desktop. I may have screwed up. Yep, I probably screwed up. <laughs> well, you got to be able to laugh at yourself, I guess. Especially better be careful, given how reflective this screen happens to be. I shouldn't pick my nose on video or something like that. But that's the basic process. This really wasn't intended as a how-to, per se. Just something to do on the last day of December. So thank you as always for watching. Certainly do feel free to leave a constructive comment if you happen to have one. I'm always interested in your views. I certainly wish all of you nothing less than the best and most wonderful new year that you can possibly have. I hope whatever you're doing to celebrate, you will choose to celebrate responsibly and please designate a driver if you happen to need one because I'd like for you to be here for next year and many years beyond that as well. Okay, there we are at the desktop. We could bring up a browser. I could connect to the Wi-Fi. I could do all of those things. It's basically a functional, low-power Linux computer at this point, and you could do all kinds of useful things with this. I actually have another one of these somewhere that was mortally wounded, and I made it into a half-top. I'm planning on sticking a USB to serial adapter on it, and having it monitor an APC smart UPS. Yeah, you could do that kind of a thing with a Raspberry Pi, but that particular hardware came to me for free because it was basically damaged. Let's go ahead and see if the touch screen is working, and it is. There you go, you can just touch it, and you know, there's Firefox, which is really a better browser anyway than good old Google Grown. At least I haven't given up all hope on it just yet. Of course, we're not connected. Oh, we got a touchscreen keyboard. That's interesting. Let's see if we can switch to our tab there, close it. We'll shrink this window down in size. Just to demonstrate that, yeah, the, the touchscreen really does work if we get that keyboard to go away. <laughs> yeah, I have a little trouble getting, getting to drag the window there. Doesn't seem to be handling that particularly well. I know that worked well in Gallium OS when I used it, but I didn't happen to have it handy. Let's see if we can get there now. Nope, that keyboard keeps coming up. <laughs> yeah, we'll try something else. We'll try the software thing here, and then we really should wrap this up, because, yeah, at this point, I'm just rambling. <laughs> That's all I'm doing. There we go. Now you can see that I can drag the windows around, so it must just be something odd about Firefox, which, of course, it would do after I paid it a compliment. So again, thank you so very much for watching. I certainly do appreciate it. And as I said, please celebrate responsibly. Designate a driver if you happen to need one, because I'd like for you to be here for the next video, the next year, and many more besides.